What's up guys? Welcome to another First Shots video. Today we're going to be shooting my brand new CZ Bren 2 MS and 5.56. So this gun has been out in the wild for a few years now and I feel like I've really slept on it for the majority of that time. I'm a big fan of CZ handguns. I have several of them and my Shadow 2 was the first competition gun that I actually won anything with. I also really enjoy my CZ Scorpion SBR. I think that ultimately there were only a few reasons that I slept on the Bren 2 for so long. So for one, I already have a 10 inch Scar 16S SBR and a Sig MCX Virtus 11.5 inch SBR. So I kind of felt like my piston driven, not an AR slots in my collection were appropriately filled. And secondly, as you probably know by now, I tend to prefer short barreled options. And while the Bren 2 pistol has an adjustable gas block, it doesn't include a specific setting for suppressors, which was kind of a turnoff for me. And lastly, the pistol grip looked really thin for my liking, and it wasn't something that could be swapped out. So those were really the main reasons that I convinced myself that I shouldn't spend the money on this originally. And a few weeks ago, I came across a post on Reddit showing off an 8 inch Bren 2 SBR. My interest was really piqued. Started doing some research and found out that all of my concerns could easily be alleviated. You can purchase larger back straps for the pistol grip to make it less thin. And HP Industries actually offers a really reasonably priced service where you can send in your adjustable gas block and they'll drill an extra hole in it to give you a customized suppressor setting. From the reviews that I've seen, it apparently works really well, which is awesome. And lastly, I was able to justify this one for myself because it's shorter and a lot lighter than my SCAR and MCX SBRs. So I went ahead and made the purchase and now here we are, getting ready to do a first shots video. I'm really excited for this, honestly. So the Bren 2 does actually have a lot of really cool features right out of the box. The charging handle is non-reciprocating and extremely smooth and easy to operate. It has full ambidextrous controls, including bolt hold open and release levers that are cleverly placed at the front of the trigger guard. It comes from the factory with a nice set of flip-up iron sights and also a buffer tube adapter so you can attach an AR style pistol brace when you get home. So for now I've installed an SBA3 brace but if all goes well today I'm planning on filing a form 1 and making an SBR and putting an OEM folding stock on there. The lower receiver is a carbon fiber infused polymer so it's really rigid but also extremely lightweight which is a big theme of this gun. And the configuration you see it in here is just under 7 pounds 2 ounces with an empty magazine. So when you purchase a Bren 2 there are several different barrel lengths to choose from. Personally I went with the 8 inch barrel model. 8 inches really isn't the most practical or effective barrel length with 5.56 in many cases but I love short guns so I thought this one would be the most fun. In particular for me, since I shoot primarily steel targets, having a shorter barrel slows down the velocity of the rounds and helps preserve the life of the steel. The 8-inch barrel also helps differentiate a little bit from my 10-inch SCAR and 11.5-inch MCX Virtus. I really like the aesthetics of the Bren 2. It's got a lot of interesting geometric shapes and lightning cuts that makes it look kind of unique. Now, it comes from the factory with a really cool looking and effective flash hider, but since I want to test the gun suppressed today as well, I removed the stock flash hider and installed a dead air key micro brake so that I could shoot it suppressed with my dead air Sam Man S and also see how it runs with a single port muzzle brake. Now, other than the muzzle brake and the SBA3 brace, the only other modification I made was installing a hollow sun AEMS red dot sight. I tend to put aim point micro style red dots on just about all of my rifles and brace pistols, but I wanted to try something different for this one. Heard a lot of great things about the hollow sun AEMS with its small and close design and large viewing window, so I'm excited to test that out today as well. And last day, as mentioned before, I'm going to be running my dead air Sam Man S with the e brake installed to see how it suppresses from the factory as well. All right, so that's what I got going on for today, guys. Let's hit the range and see what we think of the CZ Bren 2 MS.
So guys, to give you an idea of the difference between shooting the Bren 2 unsuppressed versus suppressed, I'm going to fire two shots, slow fire, unsuppressed into the dirt, and then I'm going to attach my Dead Air Sandman S suppressor and fire two more rounds, suppressed, also slow fire into the dirt. So let's start out here with two rounds, unsuppressed. Okay. Suppressed. Holy crap, guys, this gun is a total blast. I put 185 rounds through the gun today, which is a little bit more than I was planning on, but honestly, I was just having so much fun. It's extremely smooth, both suppressed and unsuppressed, and the Dead Air Key Micro Break does a great job of keeping my sights on target under rapid fire. I love the big boom of a short barreled 5.56 gun, and this is actually my first time using my Sandman on such a short platform, and I have to say, it sounds awesome. I love it. The gas wasn't nearly as bad as I was expecting to be while shooting suppressed, but I still plan on sending out my gas block to be enhanced by HB Industries so it can be even better. Now, while the Bren wasn't super gassy while shooting it suppressed on the standard setting, it was definitely noticeably punched than shooting it unsuppressed, but still very much manageable. I don't think that a dedicated suppressor setting is absolutely necessary, but I do expect that it's going to improve the shooting experience and will also help with parts longevity since the gun won't be beating itself up as much. Now as for the gas settings, the 8-inch pistol ships with a standard setting and an adverse setting, which is intended to be used to give the gun extra gas when external conditions are causing issues with cycling. Now the third setting out of the box is just an off setting, which sends no gas through the system, so that's where HB Industries is going to be drilling a smaller suppressor tune setting for me. But for today, all rounds were fired using the standard gas setting. Now while shooting this gun unsuppressed, it's actually really nicely gas from the factory, which is great to see. It's really common for companies to overgas their 5.56 guns to ensure they'll run with all brands of ammunition since there's such a wide variety on the market. But with Wolf Gold 5.56 brass case ammunition I was shooting today, I was getting a near perfect 3.30 to 4 o'clock ejection, which is exactly what I want to see. While shooting a suppressed, it was more like 1.30 to 2 o'clock or so, which actually isn't as bad as I would have expected. But I do suspect that this will be significantly improved upon when I get the suppressor setting upgrade from HB Industries. One thing that I did notice with the magazine changes is that the Magpul and CZ mag seem to have a little bit of trouble dropping free once the gun got warm. I don't really remember that being an issue initially, but I could be wrong on that. The Lancer magazines, however, did not have any issues dropping free. Now, this might improve with time and break-in, but just something to keep in mind. Now, a lot of people refer to the Bren as an improved SCAR, and I have to say, while I absolutely love my SCAR 16S SBR, and it was definitely one of my grail guns that I'd always wanted, I do think that this Bren definitely has the potential to give it a run for its money. Now, it's been a while since I shot my SCAR, so I can't compare them too definitively yet, but maybe I'll do that at some point. For now, all I can say is the Bren 2 has really blown me away, and it's far better than I ever expected it to be. But even with that said, much like the SCAR, as good as it is from the factory, there's always room for improvement, and there's a strong aftermarket that I just can't help but dip into. All right, so let's talk upgrades. What am I planning on changing on this gun? Well, for starters, while this handguard looks really cool, it's honestly not very functional. There's only one M-lock slot underneath, and it's so far forward that I couldn't even install a BCM CAG handstop, and it would be too far forward to C-clamp with a vertical grip as well. It's really just an awkward location for them to put it. So I think I'm either going to install a Press and Precision 1913 rail along the bottom, or completely replace the handguard with the M-lock handguard from HB Industries so that I can have more options in real estate for running a vertical grip once my Form 1 is approved. Trigger's actually pretty nice, honestly. It's super light, but it does have a fairly long reset and 
significant amount of over travel, which makes the already thin grip even less comfortable for me. So I'm planning on installing an HP Industries trigger, which is supposed to shorten the reset and minimize over travel. As for the pistol grip, I'm definitely installing the CZ medium back strap. It's actually a really comfortable grip in general. I really like the texture, but it's really thin at the top and it makes it so my trigger finger is way too deep in the trigger guard. It also makes my hand cramp up a little bit, which I've never really experienced before. So I'm hopeful that swapping out the back strip will take care of all that. The ambidextrous safety is great with a very positive click both ways. The safety caps are a little bit small, so I think I'll install the HP Industries extended safety caps and see if that makes it any better. Honestly, they're really good the way they are, but I just think it might be a little bit better with the HP Industries ones. I really love the design of the ambidextrous bolt hold open and release levers. Sometimes it's a little awkward to get enough pressure on it to drop the bolt. Lingle Industries makes an extended bolt catch, so I'm going to try to see if the extra leverage that it provides might make it a little bit more consistent for me. The SP Tactical SBA3 brace works pretty well. I'm happy with how it works in this pistol configuration. One thing that's worth noting is the brace adapter that comes with it wobbles quite a bit, so it's not the most secure feeling setup in that regard. I've heard that a lot of the stock options for the Bren 2 can almost completely eliminate that wobble, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm planning on going with the CZ OEM stock as opposed to an ACR stock or anything like that. The functionality looks to be decent enough, and I like the idea of maintaining the original aesthetic. I absolutely love that they have QD sling points machined into the upper receiver. It makes attaching my Savvy Sniper sling really easy and quick. And I know I've said this before, but I really wish more companies would get on board with that. And lastly, the Holosun AEMS or AIMS Red Dot. I gotta say, I love it. The bigger window is very forgiving with head placement. It makes shooting from awkward positions a lot easier. I didn't think we'd make that big of a difference since I shoot with both eyes open, but it actually was a really fun optic to use, and so I'm looking forward to using it more. Now, another thing that's nice about this optics is a relatively low profile. It doesn't interfere with manually cycling the charging handle at all, so that's great as well. Some optics that are a bit bulkier can get in the way of your hands when you're trying to cycle the action, which is a common problem with the scar, for example, so just something worth noting here. Otherwise, I love the charging handle and the ambidextrous mag release, and I'm really glad I went with the 8-inch barrel model. The gun is just super handy in this configuration, just a ton of fun to run. Reliability-wise, I had exactly zero failures in 185 rounds, which is exactly what I would expect from a gun like this. There were a few times that the bolt didn't lock open on the last round fired, but I think that's most likely because I'm shooting relatively underpowered Wolf Gold 556 brass case ammunition. So yeah, guys, I'm having a lot of fun with this thing. I'm definitely going to be filing the Form 1 to convert this pistol into an SBR, and once that's done, I'll make sure to film an update video so you can see with all the upgrades and we can see how much of a difference they make in the overall experience. So that's going to be all for today, guys. we got a lot more videos coming up soon, including more ARs, AKs, PCCs, handguns, and shotguns. So remember to like and subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned, and thanks for stopping by.